Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mama Martin again. Today, I am not bringing you any content on Martin. I am launching your study notes. I kept on promising you that I will be bringing study notes some time back. It delayed because of the coronavirus. Sometimes I would need so many things that were not available for me. I am locked down. Uh, I am respecting the regulations of my country, uh, let alone the fact that I'm not wearing the mask, I'm not wearing uh, the gloves. It's because I'm alone in this house. My children are not here. Uh, they are just at the bed there. So I am alone. I told them to leave me now because I am excited. I am proud of myself. I am proud of myself because if I'm not proud of myself, nobody will be proud of me. I have finalized your notes and uh, they consist of 161 pages. But I think I'll have to reduce it to 160 cut here and there until it becomes strictly 160, 161 pages. I have touched so many topics, ladies and gentlemen, so that I assist those who are at entry level in maritime, those who are at advanced, because I know that some of us, we didn't get any maritime studies at lower levels of our classes. Reason being that they were offered at tertiary level. So there was no way where you, you, you could be taught maritime at a, at a junior secondary high school. There was no such. Uh, most of the time, even now, some of the areas don't have maritime schools. So I've catered for those people and also for those who are already advanced but never had the background. Because when you don't have the background, you find yourself uh, with shortcomings here and there. So you'll find that the study guide or study notes uh, or a manual, I've not yet given it a name. Maybe it will end up being a book. But for now, I'm preparing for those students who are still uh, wanting. That is point number one. And also people are in a lockdown situation. So I want people to keep themselves busy reading the maritime notes so that they understand the basics of maritime, the basics of nautical science. Because if you just get it while it's already advanced, you miss a lot of things at basics level. I have 27 chapters. So I'm introducing those chapters one by one. I will be quick, very, very quick, because this is not a lecture today. I'm just launching your notes so that you go to my website and get them. You download the notes from my website at a measure, please. I have to pay my web developer. I have to pay somebody who is assisting me with these uh, videos. So there is a little bit measure on the work I have done now. It is posted or loaded in my website. You will download it. You will go to shopping. You shop it. You won't get it if you don't click shopping. Even if you are not buying, but click shopping so that you see what I have in my website. I've got a lot of work. Lot, lot of topics starting from surveying uh, yachts and small crafts, surveying uh, solar vessels, uh, dealing with bulk carriers, containers, uh, transport, economics, uh, marine environment protection, safety. So there are so many things that are there which can assist anybody who wants to learn. There is also that manual I call from land to oceans. That one is general about everything done at sea. I have touched each and every topic.
from land to oceans. It is there in my website. Now, let me start with the chapters I'm bringing to you. Uh, I have chapter one. Chapter one is introducing navigation. Bear in mind, this is dealing only with nautical science. I, I will deal with nautical science, uh, a seamanship, communications, meteorology. I will deal with these four as far as my mandate is concerned. So chapter one is introduction to navigation. What is navigation? That is definitions of so many things. Chapter two, as I have already said above, navigation concept and technology. Chapter three, variation and deviation of the magnetic compass. Chapter four, it will touch nautical charts, theoretically, really, because I said, or I indicated, that I won't deal with charting, is I feel short of uh, equipment, even the charts, I still don't have it. I don't have a chart in front of me, though I've spoken to the authority that is dealing with that. They have uh, informed me where I can order the charts. Even my books I've ordered, they have not yet arrived because of the lockdown. So now I said, let me at least wait and I don't order the charts because they will delay anyway. But I'm not that much fond of them because I'm not a specialist in charting. So you better leave what you are not clear, you are not a star on to the people who know the best as far as that one is concerned. But the theory of charts, I've got it right. So I mentioned an introduction uh, on charts and I have uh, the application of everything, every concept, variation and, and uh, deviation and declination, all those kind of things. In chapter 5, I am elaborating on the application of those uh, variations and deviations and all that, which means I am dealing with stuff like calculations and measurements, how to measure, but at introductory level because when it comes to mathematics as i have already told you i'm not a specialist so i have touched so many things as to how to do it at um, an elementary stage uh, chapter six i'm expanding uh, chapter chapter five really dealing with navigation charts now and also dealing with instruments you would see and equipment you would see in the radar dealing with equipment and technology electronics you will see in the radar and then those uh, I go on to chapter 7 because in chapter 7 I deal with the modern techniques of navigation and then chapter 8, I'm dealing with instruments used in navigation, any instrument. Chapter 9, I go on with additional equipment used in navigation. Chapter 10, I'm dealing with the radar. Remember, in my videos, I took a long time dealing with different kinds of radars. So they are in chapter 10 in your notes. I also have roles and responsibilities of a navigator. What are you required to do when you get to a vessel and then you join the team of navigators. Chapter 12, a specific requirements of a watch keeping officer. A Watchkeeping officer, sometimes people abbreviate it as OOW. That is officer on the watch. What is he supposed to do in a vessel? Once you are put in that role, what are the requirements? 
that is an important position because it is about watch. You will notice that now once you talk about watch keeping, you are invading the space of SDCW convention. I said originally, I won't be dealing with SDCW 95 and protocols. Reasons being that that is another area of its own. But unfortunately, it has got something to do with nautical sites. So you cannot be a navigator without knowing uh, watch keeping. Watch keeping is dealt with uh, in the STCW and you cannot be a navigator without knowing FSL. So those roles of navigators and watch keepers, you need to know. Uh, maybe let me mention that the master is allocating duties. When you are in a vessel, you are positioned somewhere in one place in time. So you happen to be in charge of a particular position. Chapter 13 is earth and navigation. So now the vessel is not sailing in space. No, it is at sea and it is sailing around the world. So you must know what is affecting the vessel during the course of its voyage. Or as far as navigation is concerned, I have mentioned so many things such as celestial bodies, uh, the, the markers, the navigation lights. There are so many things we need to deal with as the vessel goes. Chapter 14, you have the measuring uh, of distance on navigational charts. I'm coming back to what I have already talked about because when you deal with something else and then now you need to go to the charts as well. Remember I mentioned something like plotting. Uh, you, you come back to your charts and you work hard to get the distance. Maybe you were using a, a compass. Now that information from the compass, you need to transfer it to somewhere else, whether it's a, it's a paper uh, map or electronically. But you don't keep it in the, in the magnetic compass or come any kind of compass, the information you already have. That's why I have that chapter 14 that is dealing specifically about the measurements, but I don't go into detail because some of you are still at lower levels as you go on you are becoming advanced you deal with complex stuff remember i always say we move from the simple to the complex you must understand the basics first before you can go to the advanced chapter 15 is um implements uh, we use in navigation, some of them are portable. For instance, maybe you have a torch, uh -huh. something that is port portable you can carry. So those implements and others are dealt with in chapter 14. Chapter 15 is strictly about electronics. What electronics you have. I've already mentioned them, but, but you'll know you see that in chapter 15 the approach now is relevant to something else. So I bring it back. Chapter 15 is additional navigation means. There are so many things. For instance, you talk about a uh, signal flags. There are flags, there are so many flags that are used by vessels. When are they supposed to host? A particular flag. Sometimes it's not a flag. It's that black ball you always see. When do you see that black ball? So those are other navigation tools and uh, you will need. So they are dealt with in chapter 16. Chapter 17, I'm dealing with uh, what to do during a ship collision. You have a collision now, 
What do you do as a navigator? What do you do as a watchkeeper? What do you do as the master of the ship? Those are the kind of things we're dealing with as a collision now. When is I talk about a collision, I mean ships collide with one another. Once you have all the technology I've already mentioned, but ships can still collide, what do you do? You'll find that your notes have got all illustrations of any concept I'm talking about. If I'm talking about collision, I will show you, or I am showing you, how ships collide. An example will be there. If I'm talking about an equipment, you'll show that kind of equipment because, ladies and gentlemen, you must know and understand that there are people who stay in the rural areas, pure rural areas in Africa, who want to be maritime specialists. They are interested in this subject. Those people won't be able to get to the ocean when they want to, to see a vessel. They won't see a vessel let alone the equipment that is used. So I did a research on images, free, free, free images. I am referencing them and they are all free images you will get on the internet. And I put them there. So now that collision of the ship that is dealt with in chapter 18. And then we have duties of the OOW. OOW is the officer on watch. I have already mentioned the watchkeeping. Uh, the chapter that is based on STCW and uh, protocols. Uh, chapter 20, its procedures followed on rough seas. When the seas are rough, what do you do? What do you mean when you say a sea is rough? It means the seafarers are encountering storms. There are storms at sea as well. They are not different from earth. And then the weather uh, suddenly changes to be something else that was not planned for. Sometimes they plan for a kind of weather. They know what to do. But sometimes without expectations and uh, the weather becomes terrible bad what are they supposed to do these people are far from home they are in the high oceans they are alone they depend on themselves and the leadership of the captain that is why the captain is the most important person they listen to when are they? Everybody, they work like the Navy. They work like the Defense Force. An instruction from the captain is an instruction for, from the captain. Everybody must take it. Everybody must listen. Everybody must do. Because if they fail in that, and that ship sink, there will be so many losses. Remember, they are shippers. They have a property there. There is a ship owner, the ship itself belongs to somebody, he has paid for it. There is cargo, right, the cargo, if the, that, the whole cargo perishes at sea, look at the cost that is involved there. So they end up having lawyers for that, insurance lawyers. So insurance lawyers and underwriters, when an incident happens, they want all records. They want to know everything that was done when the incident or, or even before the incident happened. They want to see the logbook, the breach logbook. There should be a logbook because you need to record everything that is happening there. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are duties there. There are procedures to be followed and they are written. They are put there for everybody to see what do you do at a particular time i'm talking about the nautical science right it's not, you need not just say nautical science nautical science you don't know what you are talking about or what is involved 
uh, I have the vessel at anchor. That will be chapter 21. Vessels at anchor. It means that that vessel, uh, according to the plan, it is meant to enter a port. But sometimes it is in the queue because there are so many vessels entering this port. Some ports are busier than others. That vessel will anchor somewhere. Anchoring means that the vessel stop in the middle of nowhere, let's see. In a known place, of course, because it was planned. And then they throw the anchor down, lower. Let me not say throw, they don't throw, they lower the anchor down. And then they use the divers to fix that. They have, ships have divers as well, ladies and gentlemen. That is why I said there's a lot involved in this. We need not uh, look at uh, certain areas and forget about others. Now this anchor, you know the anchor of a ship. You'll see, if you don't know it, you'll see a picture in your notes. It, an anchor is lowered down to the seabed of the ocean. That's why it is anchored tight there. And there are chains, really, that are lowering down. You'll see those chains. Uh, they lower the anchor. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about in, in uh, chapter 21. What is done when a ship is being anchored and why it is anchored? Uh, I have chapter 22. How to prepare a passage plan. A passage plan is when the ship is leaving a port now. It is leaving, it is moving from this destination to another destination. Uh, with the purpose of offloading the cargo. The ship doesn't carry one particular cargo from one person. It carries cargoes from different shippers and they are going to different ports or different destinations. Now, they, are, they have been anchoring in this port. Uh, offloading and also resting. Sometimes they even enjoy the city where they are visiting, taking tour. That's what they do because it's boring at sea. They must do when they get to a certain point. That's why we have for that matter the Maritime Labor Convention that is elaborating, deliberating on the treatment of seafarers in different ports. So now they, 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 they are preparing to go now, according to their plan. From this port to another, they revisit their passage plan. If there are amendments that need to be done, they do them. So a passage, a passage plan is prepared. Then I'm elaborating on that. You are going to see how they prepare themselves to leave one port to another. Uh, I have the bridge logbook and entries. I've already mentioned that one. Anything that is done in the vessel is recorded. If, for example, they decide to deviate somehow, or they deviated because of certain reasons. Remember when we were talking about Leeway and Leeward, when the adversary is at sea? are making the ship lose its course. Then, it's then that you have a problem now. That problem, sometimes it causes a little bit of deviation that needs to be corrected. I talked about that in my pre previous videos. Then once this uh, ship has deviated a little bit, that should be recorded. If they met a storm at a certain point at sea, that should be recorded. Why should I? There is time delay. I said time is money. 
Right. If they are delaying anywhere else, that should be accounted for. You can't just say, I delayed, and then you don't tell your principals as to why you delayed. So the, the, the logbook is capturing so many things, and even the duties that were performed. So you'll, you'll get that information in chapter uh, 23, logbook and entries. I have emergency towing. Oh, I like this one. Emergency towing. I like that, this one. The reason why I like emergency towing is that I was employed in the Department for Transport one other time. So I was managing a tug, the biggest we had. That was 180 bullet pool. So that, that was its power. So I was managing that tag and now I had to be exposed to a kind of training as to what is really happening. Uh, I thank Smith Amanda. Uh, it's called Amsol these days. I thank Amsol who empowered me to go to the port of Rotterdam to go and learn about emergency tools or salvage, salvage in general. I like it because I have hands-on experience, emergency tooling. That is dealt with in uh, chapter 24. I am telling you about what is really happening. When ships have to be towed, there are so many things that can cause that. Maybe a ship is, is grounded, there is a collision, a ship uh, is burning somehow, needs repairs, and all those things. Remember that some ships even burn at sea, and then to ashes, and then you don't have any ship. But sometimes they are saved. Then when we need that kind of salvage and towing, uh, you need a big vessel called a tug. So a tag must, must tow. Chapter 25 deals with understanding nautical flag etiquettes. There's a discipline there, ladies and gentlemen. When do you host this flag, this kind of flag? And when do you host another flag? Because I said that there are many. So there's certain respect that is happening there. The vessels respect one another. They use some kinds of flags. To do that. Chapter 26, uh, it's use of lights and lighthouses for navigation. Lights and lighthouses are used to guide the ship so that they avoid uh, collisions. We are interested in safety, yes. Not safety alone, by the way. Sometimes I mention safety, security, marine environment protection, and piracy. All those things are there. You'll find me uh, 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 mentioning them along the line. Because the seafarers need to take care of these things. They should not be happening. Because once they happen, you get what we call an incident or an accident, or a near miss. Those three are happening at sea. So the crew must make it a point that there is no accident, no incident, not even near miss. It, the journey must be safe from port to port without any houses. Uh, chapter 27, the last one. It's other kinds of lights. You'll find other kinds of lights now there. You'll be dealing with, for instance, in the olden days, they used to have light ships and themselves. Then we need to talk about when those light ships were no longer uh, working or defunctional. Uh, what lights replaced them for doing what? You'll get that in chapter 27. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today. Uh, we, 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 we have a lot. We dealt with a lot of concepts. 
So many things you are going to get it, see. For that matter, almost all, really. It's just that you move from simple to complex. You, 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 when you are a tertiary, you are increasing your knowledge from what you already know, from the basics. And then this whole thing becomes too advanced. Other areas I can't even touch them myself. Don't forget that, let me mention this is very important. The information I used in this your study guide was from the ship captains. Their experiences, they, are, they tell us, if you are able to research, they tell us exactly what is happening at sea, at what time. A ship captain is a master, really. Sometimes we're casual. We move from calling them masters, and then we say captains. Well, professionally, you need to teach yourself to call them masters. This is a very important area. They are master mariners. These guys are master mariners. So we need to respect them. You just you don't just throw the word captain, captain, captain. No, I must protect them. You guys, you have my protection now. You are masters. Reason being that you are master mariners. So I call you. Ladies and gentlemen, these guys have assisted me a lot from all over the world. They are smart and they have made me smart because I felt like sometimes I fall short of certain areas. Remember, when you take somebody else's work, if you'll find me like even putting brackets and then put the name of somebody who has a categorically initiated the, the, the extras. So, I refer, they fall down there in my references, you will see their names and also in the body of the document, I will just write somebody's name. It means that I don't want to steal anybody's information. So, ladies and gentlemen, I acknowledge such assistance. I've used my own what I, the theory I know, but I found that it's not enough. Let me add from people who have been in the cold face of doing this business. I thank you.